hello guys welcome to today's um, youtube series and today we'll be doing an introduction to um echo echo framework where we'll be discussing on how to set up our projects and how to actually use echo framework that's basically what we'll be doing today so just stay with me follow me so for today what I will be making use of in terms of tool is I will be using the Golang, Golang uh, code editor. Basically, the Golang editor is quite makes life easy. If you want to download yours, you can go to Golang. Just search for Golang on Google. Golang. So it is a product by JetBrains, which are, I have found really helpful for uh, my work when I'm working with uh, Goland. So I hope uh, you enjoy it. Let's get started. So uh, to start with, I already have my Goland opened. Goland. So I will start a new project. So before you start this, I want you to know that you need Go version of Go 1.22, 1.2 above to be able to follow this project. Then you also need to have set all your Go environment variables and make sure that if you type, um, let me open my terminal. So if you type go version, you should get something like this in your terminal for you to be able to follow through this tutorial. So as you can see, as at the point of recording this chapter, the go version we are using is go 1.20.3. So I believe going forward, any version above should be able, you should be able to follow the tutorial very well with a version above. Version below, you will struggle to actually make use of some of the packages we'll be using. So let's get started. So to start a new project, I'm going to create, I'm going to click on new projects and I'm going to provide the name of the project that I want to actually start with. So um, the name of the project, I'll call the project uh, just like our app name, Bujetsi. So I will leave it in small letter, Bujetsi app, uh, Bujetsi backend. The environment, we don't need to set anything yet. And we already, you can see that Goland already picked the, um, the Go I am going to use, the Go version I will be using. And the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on create. So it is automatically going to initialize my project for me and we can easily start working. So the folder structure that I will be following, although I, I have to be honest in terms of folder structure for Golang, I still suck at it. I still get confused. In fact, I'm still learning. So I am more than happy to actually hear from people what they think is best, the best way they feel like to structure this project. So uh, to start with, the way I have been structuring my Golang project is basically, number one, I try to create well, uh, if a CMD folder, make DIR CMD. So inside the CMD is where a bunch of my API implementations are going to be. Then I'm going to also have uh, what we call what we call internal in Goland internal. So the internal folder is where anything that is in particular to this particular project or to this particular backend project, this is where it is going to be. Things like database, Miller, uh, model, something that cannot be reused in another package. That is where this is basically 
going to be then um, inside my cmd i need another folder cmd called api so the api folder is what we undo other folders right but to not jump the gun let's just take it one step at a time so at the base of my cmd i need my main dot go which is basically where uh which is basically the entry point of your go application without the main dot go you cannot run a go application at least to the best of my knowledge so that is why we'll be making we'll just come here we'll just come um we just come to the API folder and create a Go file. I'll call it main. I can even use the Go land to create. I think it's can. Okay, it's cannot. I will just call it. Uh -huh. You can if you select simple application, it will create a main. It will create a main. Um. Okay, let me. I think I will have to provide it a name. Main. Dot go. So this is. Uh, but we will not be calling this package name API. What we'll be calling it is main, right? But because I like boiler pits, I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this. Then I'm going to rename this to. I'm just going to select. And I'm, I'm just going to select simple application, and I already have the function dot main generated for me so not to waste too much of your time the aim of this chapter is to introduce you to echo framework and how you can actually make use of it to create simple apis so let's go to the echo framework um, documentation echo framework so um so in order to make use of echo framework all we need to do is um we have already created our directory we've already initiated our app all we need to do is run go get run this command in our code editor in our terminal like so then this command will download the echo framework pack package for us so that we can use it in our golang application so the next thing we need to do is we need to if you look at this all we need to do now is copy all of the code that is here and paste and you can see uh, automatically my goland editor has imported all of the necessary packages for me as i pasted the um as I pasted the code that I copied from, from here. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run this application in terminal. So in order to run this application in terminal, what I will be doing, okay, don't let me go to that yet. I'll, all we need to just do is we just need to say, go run um, dot, slash cmd we are going into the cmd folder slash api and that is all so this is about to run our goland application now as you can see our goland application has started so if i go to the web browser and i go to localhost localhost which is the ports that we've used here 1323 bam you can see we have hello world it is so easy it is very very easy to set up which is why i've actually gone with framework if we were using the regular um goland http we'll have more work to do than this to actually get something simple like this to actually start um running so um 
that's basically how to initialize a an echo framework to actually start a echo framework server so now as you can see what we've done in line 9 is to initiate a new echo framework uh the, the echo framework um server then we attached a route to it then inside here we started the application then we logged the response of uh, we logged the response of e dot starts with e dot starts on our terminal so that is how we were able to easily initialize our echo framework so i said it's right at the beginning of this um application that we'll be need we'll be needing some other packages along the line one of the things we'll be needing is a package to load our emv variables we need a package to also send mails we need packages different packages as we go on oh so let's just set up i'll open a new terminal like so then i'll install the package that will allow us to use emv variables so before i so let's look for joho the emv variable that i use is joho emv go i'll just search for it like that so how do we install it just like we installed echo framework we say go get joo.env and like so it has been added the reason why it was fast like this is because i already have it cached in my in my system so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a .env file and i'm also going to create a .ignore file because i don't want to push my env file to the to gtop so inside my just ignore file i'll just have dot env so that way it will not be added to gtop by the time we start making use of gtop so inside um inside this we can then load just as our application is starting is a perfect time for us to actually load our env variable so how do we load it if you look at the um if you look at the documentation itself this is basically all we need to do we just copy this paste so error and we check for error if uh, if so if error is not nil what do we want to do we want to log a fatal error that we are unable to actually load the dot env but because i would like to make use of the logger that comes with echo framework itself i will just say log dot fatal then i'll remove this So that way now we'll have we'll be able to access the EMV variables that we might have set here. So the first EMV variable I am going to set is going to be our app port. App port, sorry, app port, which is going to be three thousand, just like I like it. Uh, so um here then i'm going to come here i'm going to come here and replace it with the the port number that we have actually set right so in order to get an emv variable let's see all we need to do is this we just say let's say 
port is equals to env dot get app port. So you can see my GoLand is even giving me auto completion. So in order to so I will then put the ports in here. Uh, so in order to replace the ports, I will just use the FMT, the Go FMT package. So let me do this. I will say uh, app address. Let me say address equals to uh, local host like then string uh, okay it should be like this fmt does print f local host then the string that i want to pass in is it not percentage? Okay. I think I, it has to be double quotation. Double quotation. Then string, yes. Then I'll pass the ports in here. So uh, then I can put the port address in here, just like that. So address. So like so, so we just need to restart our application. Let's just test this. Now you can see my application is now starting at port 3000. So the reason why I attached localhost is, let me comment this out. Initially, this was what we had, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? If I try to run this application, what's not used, okay, let me, comment this out so if i try to run this application every time i try to run this application my mac will keep asking me to allow the network so in order to prevent this from happening we now that is why if, in order to prevent that from happening all you need to do is attach this local host to the port number you want to use so we can now say app address uh yeah okay ports ports right so if i run it again now so you can see no that pop-up is not coming back again so if we come back here now and say three thousand three thousand then you can see we are getting our hello world again right so uh that is that on how to actually set up our echo framework application the next thing that i will be doing is um the next thing i will be doing now is uh, to set up routes and explain how middleware works in echo framework so thank you for watching this episode and i hope you really enjoyed it thank you subscribe if you want to keep following our the process of building our backend application for budgeting